Hello, hello. Back Grasshopper World. I guess I'm call it part two. It might be part three. I figured I want to type it up. Uh, speak on the family. Um, I'm back, and the daylight then caught me, and I just got the intake manifold off. So I'm doing pretty good on that. Just got the intake manifold off, and had my heat on, so it kept me warm. Just cut it off so everybody can hear. And uh, we're gonna switch it over now, where y'all can see see um, what's going on. So hold on here. So I figure out how to do this. Uh, it won't switch. Oh well. Oh well. But let's see here. You see, that is what the inside of the engine look like. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can see those uh, gases uh, right there. That is the problem, the culprit. But what we have here is an intake manifold gasket. Mm -hmm. I'm doing plus a head gasket. And these are these are push rods here, intake and exhaust. Which on a you get a box, you put them in with the engine showing the um, how to cook it out because these are different lengths. Yeah, okay. you were dealing with you're dealing with five and a quarter and six inches. Intake is let's see. Yeah, intake is five and a quarter inch long and the exhaust is six inches long. And when I first did this about, about five years ago. No, shoot. Twelve years ago. When I first did it about twelve years ago, I didn't know that. So when I uh, changed it out, put it together. It was New Year's. I, I was bringing the New Year in working. It was New Year's and uh, put it together and I heard a crack. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I'm like, what the world is that noise? And went back and found out one of the rods got bent. And I was trying to figure out what happened. And so that's when I went and got the book. It was, it's important for us to read. They always say if you want to hide something from us, put it in the book. We got to read, people. We got to read and we'll learn the world. And over time, I learned how to read and I teach my kids. Reading is important because a lot of knowledge is hidden in the book. Especially when you go back 135 years ago, a lot of knowledge is hid in the book, and people know what I'm talking about. Uh, so when I looked in the book, I saw that the intake is five and a half, five and three quarter, and the exhaust is six inches. So I always remember that to this day because that New Year experience taught me something. Because in the mechanic world, anytime, well, anytime, any profession, you do something, you mess it up, you're responsible for it. Don't let nobody think you ain't, because you are. I have broke stuff in the past, and I might charge 300 for the job, and it cost me 150 because I broke it, and I only made 150 because I had to spend 150 out of the $300 to fix something. And in the car world, this is exactly what it is. What you see is what you get. And like I said, my videos are not just teaching you how to work on cars, but also we have, every time I post, I'm going to tell you something, that's your story of my life, uh, how I got to be where I'm at now, which sometimes don't look like nowhere, but I'm successful in my own way. Success ain't measured how much money you got, what kind of cars you got, what kind of house you got. Success is measured in how much love you possess and family and how together you are. In my family, we are well together most of the time. Everybody got problems. We ain't perfect, but we well together enough to say I love you. Like my great grandma <coughs> raised me. And my grandma, uh, well, I always have been raised by my grandparents. My mom was over very, she works a lot. And <coughs> her, her working <coughs> has got me and my siblings to where we at now. And I'm proud. I tell my mom all the time, I thank you for working hard like you did. And that's why I'm working. I work 16, 20 hours a day. But like I said, when I turn 40 next year, I'm retiring. To about eight hours, and eight to ten hours a day is my goal. Cause my kids, my babies are eight, nine, or ten, and I have other children too. I have a lot of children adopted more than adopted than biological. But to me, like I tell anybody, you ain't got to have relations to have a child. All you do is take a child in and love them as your own. And I got more children like that that I have successfully raised and been there for them. All. Oh, even all the way up to 35 year old. I'm 39 myself. I even claim I even claim a 60 year old. 
because shoot, I always help out. She's my child too. So hey, that's what it is. And uh, like I said, I got things going on, and that's like that is what I got so far. The parts took it off. I'm gonna try to keep my recordings down as much as possible, but you know, if it get over, oh well, we're in a good time because God is my savior, Jesus. I follow him, believe in him. I, I would, if one, sometime a person asked me before, if I had a choice to change anything in my life, would I do it? I said, no, nah, I wouldn't change that one thing. Out of my experiences, incarceration, uh, death for one of my children, death for my animals. I'm, I thank God for everything I've been through, even what I'm going through now. Because every trial and tribulation we have, people, is a learning lesson. It's a lesson learned. And we got to take it, take the bitter with the sweet. You know, as my grandma said before she passed, when she came and saw me at my house one time to visit, she said, when you left Mississippi, you left with a suitcase. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, look what happened when you unpacked it. And I never looked at it that way. That's old school knowledge, people. When you when you finally through moving and you unpack this suitcase, look at the house and children you got out of it and businesses. Look at all the stuff you got out of that suitcase that you had. 